Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. I haven't done like a video in a while. I've just been doing a lot of lives and I think that that just kind of is a little bit easier for me, I think. Um, but today I'm just going to do a video. So I've kind of had like an epiphany over the last couple days. Um, still doing the benzodiazepine withdrawal and you know, really focusing on limiting the medication and just constantly moving forward. So I actually started kind of figuring out what my problem is because for a while there, um, I thought it might be SSCD. I thought it might be like, you know, allergies or like I wasn't really 100% sure. And so I was starting to do like, elimination. So they, we had this four things, eustachian tube dysfunction, allergies, uh, migraines, and the SSCD. And I think there was one more. I think there was one more that I can't think of right now. So the, I think there was five that I was kind of doing elimination. Um, I was sick over this, this past week. Like I got sick again and TMI, if you're kind of squeamish, maybe fast forward a minute or two. Um, I do have to say, I'm not a doctor. I do not claim to be a doctor. I'm not a pharmacist. Um, these are just my personal experiences. And I'm just sharing like what I'm going through and what I've learned. So with that being said, um, I was sick this past week. And I was I kind of had this sensation that something was stuck up here. So not, not where you could blow, but like up here, up here. And I have had sinus surgery thinking that it was like my problem. So I'm thinking three years ago, I had a sinus surgery. Um, so I got one of those little like neti pot, pots, but you actually put it here and then you turn it on and it does the pulsating throughout your head, you know, throughout your sinuses. And so I would try to blow my nose and it literally felt like this hard rock like up here up here like i i just was like what in the world i've never had this sensation um but when i would like sniff up it felt like something was moving it was the craziest thing guys um so it was really driving me crazy for the past two nights like i couldn't lay on my side because if i laid on my side and i swallowed i felt this like this it would do this like where I couldn't breathe. I, so I guess it, it is the sensation if you're really, 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 really stuffy and you can't get any air in. That's how it felt. But I wasn't. It wasn't here that was stuffed up. Um, if that makes any sense. I'm sorry if it's not making sense, but it wasn't in the area where you're usually stuffy, which is here, and you spray the afferin because um, the afferin was doing nothing, and usually it works amazing when I'm sick. Um, I use it for like a day or I, maybe one time, maybe two. Like I don't use it more than that. So, um, so yeah, it was like up here. I couldn't blow it out. I couldn't like, and so I use my, my neti pot, my thing, because it was driving me insane. It was driving me insane. So I did that. And then, um, I put my head back and I felt something. So I went, you know how you suck it up and then I spit it out. And I'm telling you, it was like this big, like this big. And I was like, what the f is that? It was crazy, guys. It was crazy that that was up here. That's why I couldn't blow it out. And that's why it wasn't moving. And it was just like so uncomfortable. So I was just like, ooh, that's gross. So that made me feel like. I got everything out of my sinuses and I was like, okay, so I really felt like um, allergy medicine, Claritin D and Zyrtec and all of those things have not worked in the past. Um, decongestants, all of that stuff has not worked in the past for my ears. So I feel like it's safe to say at this point, after being sick so many times, um, using my sinus rinse, getting a lot out, like I get a lot out when I'm sick or after being sick, I don't think it's allergies at this point. Um, and then moving on to the eustachian tube dysfunction. Um, I did have eustachian tube surgery where they go in with a balloon 
and they blow it up and then they um, bring it back down and it is supposed to kind of like get your eustachian tubes working again. Um, I did have that surgery and it's not a eustachian tube prob problem because it like I can equalize when I pull my nose and blow. And so, um, but it just kind of like clicks and does all that stuff again. So I'm like, it's not a eustachian tube problem. But for the past few days, I've been having really, really gnarly headaches. And I remember probably like three years ago, I would get them every day and I would feel the pain here and like here. So I was like, it's a sinus thing. It's TMJ. Oh, that's what it was, TMJ. I did see a TMJ uh, oral surgeon who did a mouth, a mouth guard, and it wasn't TMJ. That was the other one. That was the fifth one. And so I'm down to migraines, which I always was like, I don't get migraines. But the more I look back on it, um, I do get headaches. I do get... I guess migraines, but I never thought that that's what it was. I was always like, it's a sinus infection. It's TMJ. It's, it feels like pressure. Um, but now that I'm kind of doing the elimination thing where I'm figuring out what it isn't, um, I think that's the only thing I'm left with. And yesterday I had a really gnarly headache, especially because we're getting like a storm. And today it's been pretty gnarly, um, which I feel kind of relieved because I just wanted an answer because once I get an answer, I can, I can figure out how to take care of it. I can figure out how to treat it. So here's my next dilemma. Um, I've been on, you know, amitriptyline, ner you know, just a bunch of different migraine medications or antidepressants that didn't help. And but if I do like a C, C, R, G, R, G, um, it makes me depressed. So like if I take Nurtec every other day, it makes me depressed. If I take Topiramate, it makes me depressed. So I'm really, really stuck. Um, I'm looking into doing the Emang, Emang, it's the shot. I'm looking at possibly doing that. I've done one shot in the past when my doctor said that that's what it was. Um, and I think that that one has, for me, it had the least amount of effects. I didn't have to even worry about it. And it was just, I mean, I was so desperate that last night I did take the uh, neurotryptyline, which is the same class of drugs as the amitriptyline that I was on, um, that I got off with the benzo. Um, if you are new to my channel, then just go to the day one and I kind of go into detail about like everything so that it makes sense. Um, but I took the one 10 milligram of neurotryptyline yesterday because I'm just like, the more I'm, the more I'm becoming aware that it's headaches, the more I'm becoming aware that it's headaches. And I can't just kind of like push it away that it's just like the pressure, the, you know, whatever sinus. Um, the more I'm really starting to go, okay, this sucks. Um, because I don't have like a whole lot of treatment options that work. If it's a pyramate, if I was able to take that, it would be, it would be great. But I just have that depression symptom, like really bad. It, it hit me hard with the pyramate. <sighs> Sorry, I start filming and then I start yawning. So where was I? So yes, so I took the noratriptyline yesterday night because I have kind of had that face pain, pain right here, pain right here. It's basically like I don't get the headache here. I get the headache here where it just feels like it's in my face. And then the ears, the ears plugging up and popping and clicking and all that. That was my first symptom was the ear pressure pain. And so when I... Um, took the noratriptyline last night. 
it made me so extremely nauseous. It made me have these anxiety, hot and cold flashes. It was, I even went in the bathroom to try to try to throw it up because it was beyond weird. It was weird. Um, I've never had that reaction. I do not understand why I had it, but I just, I did. So I went in the bathroom and I tried to throw it up and I hate throwing up. Like if there's nothing more on this planet that I hate more when I'm sick, it's throwing up. Like everything else I could kind of handle, but that part is just awful for me. I know it is for majority of people. So even when I was trying to make myself throw up, I still wasn't able to. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, it had been two hours since I took it. I just have to just relax and let it ride out. And then I would be laying in bed and have like this like wave of anxiety. And then it'd go away. And then it'd come back. And then it'd go away. And it was just, it was awful. So then I started having this like fear of, okay, well, what if I can't treat this migraine? Like, you know, changing my diet, uh, which I'm, I'm doing. I'm changing my diet back to, um, I'm going to do like keto mixed with the Dizzy Cook diet. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the Dizzy Cook diet has like the no MSG. And you guys can look it up, the Dizzy Cook diet. Um, no MSG, none of this, 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 like... Um, but like the cheeses are like all natural, the turkeys are all natural. So like that stuff I'm gonna take from the Dizzy Cook diet. But then the keto, you can have like whatever cheese, whatever meat, um, but I'm not gonna do the MSG. So I'm gonna take the cheese that I can do on the Dizzy Cook diet. So like, I'm just gonna take bits and pieces from both of those diets that I feel are gonna align with making me the, the best. So like where keto might have MSG in it or it might have like some things in it that I won't eat. I'll go to the Disney cook diet, but like, yeah, you see what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. You guys get it. I'm just going to dabble in both of them and see, see, just try to eat as clean as I can. Um, so yeah, the amount it's A I M O I G or, among, I, I say among, but I know that that's not the, the name, but I'm thinking I'm going to do, you know, start exercising, which is really difficult for me because I just don't feel well a lot of the time and not feeling well a lot of the time makes me feel depressed, which makes me feel like I don't want to do anything. And I know they go hand in hand. I, I, I get it. But the, the working out is going to be the hardest thing for me because the diet thing is not going to be hard for me. Like, I'm not a big foodie. I'm not somebody who, um, you know, I do occasionally like certain foods, like my Thai. But at the end of the day, in order to feel better and feel good, I will wipe away all food. Like, if I could, I would get, like, a port. And I would be fed through a bag every day where I didn't even have to eat. I didn't even have to think about it. And I could eat like the best of food. I would do that. Like I would do that to feel good. So if breakfast, I have to eat eggs and lunch and like, I'll do that. It's not a problem. The food thing is not a big deal to me. I do have those instances where like every once in a while, I'm like, I'm craving a candy bar, da, da, da. But Food has really never been an issue for me. I don't really have a hard time with saying no to food or whatever. Um, but the exercise is definitely harder because you have to push yourself when you don't feel like it and if you don't feel well. So I, but I am going to get a membership at one of the gyms out here and swim, sauna, work out, that sort of thing. Um, I do, I do have like the back massager that goes like this and I did use that. It did help some, which thank goodness, because the past couple days have been really frustrating. And I, I tend to get stuck in my head and feel like, feel just like it's just 
never ending. Um, even taking Motrin 800 or taking Nurtec, um, it just feels like this dull uh, pain. So, so yeah. So I ended up sleeping off of the the norotriptyline. I ended up sleeping it off. Uh, my husband has his cousin and a friend in town. So I definitely felt like I needed to go downstairs and kind of like hang out. Um, that's the hard part is I'm a pretty social person. Like if we have game night or if we have, you know, like I'm one of the people to, to love having conversations and be there. And today I was really close to being like, I'm going to go lay down. Um, it's really, really nice to, ever since I started really paying attention to my symptoms and really paying attention to things and kind of like figuring out what it's not, I do feel like knowing what it is is half the battle for sure. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to try to eat, do those diets, you know, work out, go swimming, that sort of thing. I started taking the vitamins for migraines and I'm looking at the medication. So I'm looking at tackling it from every avenue that my neurologist says to tackle it. Um, ideally, I like to get it under control, maybe take like a couple shots of the Among. Um, I know I'm not saying it right, but and then hopefully be done with that and be on the roll of the diet and the exercise and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of like what I got going on. What else do I have going on? My husband's cousin is leaving tomorrow, so we're just trying to trying to do all that, figure out what to do. But it definitely is really hard dealing with feeling shitty every single day. And I know a lot of you out there are going through the same thing, whether it be the benzo withdrawal or medication withdrawal or health problems or whatever it may be. Um, it's hard. It's really hard because life is just miserable when you feel like this. So that's what we got going on. We watched the Spain versus England game today, the soccer game, and Spain won, yay. <laughs> For those of you, my husband's family's from Spain, so my kids are half Spanish, and I am just trying to figure out how to get rid of this headache. So, so stinking hot outside. I walked outside to take some trash, and I was like, nope, it's just too freaking much. But I think that's it. I just wanted to update you guys. Um, I think that's it. Let me just make sure. Yeah, I think that's it. That's just kind of what I've what I've under, uncovered. And I know the headaches go away, and I know every day is different. But when you're stuck in it, stuck in it for days or weeks, it feels like it's just never ending. And that can be overwhelming. It can definitely be overwhelming. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow for my live. Thank you so much. If you guys are still here at 19 Minutes, thank you so, so much for, for being here and um, listening to my story and all of that good stuff. I appreciate you all. Thanks. Bye.